Good afternoon. I am an artist working on an architectural canvas with dynamic technology, data and influenced by systems that exist in the natural world. I lead an art studio in London and this is an overview of our site specific media art installations to give you a context of this work. The work is inspired by natural systems. Naturally people and uses a technological palette. Biomimicry, ecologies, natural environments, people behaviour, spatial interaction, use of technology for good are things which interest us. Telling of stories and response to the site comes first, which enables the work to make places through digital interventions and in turn create communities. The work is developed in the studio in London by a multidisciplinary team consisting of engineers, scientists, architects, designers, coders who prototype all of the studio's output in-house. The studio was incorporated in 2002 and has developed applied computation techniques to develop a series of site-specific permanent media artworks. I will talk through how the computation methodology is developed and will talk in depth about an arboreal art installation in South Seoul. This animated park in downtown Toronto combines technology and landscape architecture to create a spatial media artwork which is cognizant of its environment. Toronto's site analysis from the CN Tower revealed a dynamically changing shadowscape which shaped the urban environment. In order to build a system which would have a knowledge of its surrounding lightscape, we prototyped a light emitting and sensing canvas. Up close, the technology allows for light sensing and light emitting in alternating turns at 120 Hz. We weave the technology into a water jet cut Torontonian granite sculptural face. The final result for Back to Front is a spatial media artwork which is aware of the light levels incident onto its surface, giving it an impression of the contextual environment within which it is located. This is a media artwork which uses generative diachroic light growth patterns which are presented across a pentagonal grid framework. The computer model controls the studio one-to-one -one prototype using the same script and control methodology. The optical flow analysis of the adjacent room in plan reveals the movement of viewers which become part of the artwork. This computer vision understands the people flow through space and people become the paintbrush. Within the studio we have developed multiple digital twins which act as controllers and pre-visualisation tools for our media art installations. In this instance, creating a temporary media art installation to explore the reinvention of an existing place, creating augmented light architecture to be layered over the top of an existing space.
Here we are using a generative volumetric pattern to approximate the illusion of the sky filling with a murmuration of seabirds. The illusion is improved by paying special attention to the contrast ratio of the liquid crystal birds against the bright background. The same contrast ratio exists in digital philotaxy, the main case study I would like to present to you next. The brief from 2017 for digital philotaxy was to look at the entrance spaces in Hankook Tyre's new headquarters in Pangyo, Seoul, and to create an immersive, dynamic, innovative and integrated artwork which would complement the building and its workplace interiors designed by Foster and Partners. As we explored the scheme design, we started to identify locations which would create impressions on the journey into the building. Looking closer at the ascent into the atrium, we identified a smoke screen which could be a location for the artwork. In line with the architectural approach and aspirations, digital philotaxy was designed as site-specific response to Hankook Tyre's culture of innovation, creativity, and craftsmanship. To summarise, the piece was considered integral to the journey into and through the building, with the artwork brief to create a striking first impression, a grand arrival sequence as you ascend the escalator and be an exemplar of the Hankook brand. Hankook were keen to align the artwork with their innovative spirit and wanted to create an environment which would attract talent to the building and its research environment. Here you can see some of the brand movies we watched to immerse ourselves into the culture of spherical wheels, driverless cars, dynamic tyre treads and exotic racing rubber compounds. Here you can see an analytical diagram which starts the conceptual process by analysing the split level views on the journeys into the building. We realised there would be striking views from level 1 and level 6. This analysis led us to reference natural environments that could be experienced from below, within and above such as clouds, arboreal and water environments. We settled on developing the tree crown, canopy concept. This allowed us to create an intervention which had a different experience from below within and above. The tree canopy would act as a living mask and illustrated, I'm going to borrow from the Japanese, the Komarebi effect, sunlight filtering through leaves. Of course it also allowed us to develop a piece that could change over time in response to the external environment. We used a seasonal bias in the overarching algorithm. We started to speculate on how local effects of the wind coming from a weather API would affect the piece bringing the external environment outside to the building inside. Alongside how this could be translated into macro and micro effects in a virtual canopy. These dynamic sketches show the initial development of an animated canvas mask with integrated liquid crystal shutters. This was a placeholder aligned with the original smokescreen design. We started to speculate how visitors on the escalator would interact with the artwork. There was a precedent we had created in a museum in Denmark. Here is an insight into the technology which allows for variable transparency. This has been developed in-house by the studio the liquid crystal technology. It also requires little maintenance or power, is highly durable and long lasting. Once we have established the conceptual direction and the technical palette, we started to look at how we could arrange the leaves to form the notional canopy. We started by proposing a double curved planar structure. Next, we started to look at the leaf. In addition to LCD shutter leaves which obscure light, we developed leaves that emit light by using edge-lit polymer. 
we hoped that by controlling these elements in combination, that it would be possible to simulate the effect of sunlight passing through a canopy. We quickly realised that the best effects were generated when the different components overlapped and started to experiment by adding depth and volume to the piece. Initial structural analysis suggested that we would need a ring beam to create the space for the escalator to pass through. Several catenary structures were proposed to get rid of this and therefore resemble a natural canopy whilst keeping the nodes visible as you travel through the piece. Now the catenary cables were the primary structure. We revisited the secondary structures to see how these could be arranged to create depth and volume. The challenge was to repeat as many structural components as possible, but arrange them in such a way that they did not appear regular or repeated, to create a pseudo-random effect within the filler taxi. Getting the overall density of the nodes right was critical. Too sparse and the primary structure became too prominent, too dense, and it prevented views through the piece from above and below. At the same time, we were developing the individual nodes. These mock-ups explored the form and functionality of the liquid crystal shutters and also the light emitting panels. It was important to get details like the colour functionality correct. And so, we tried several different light engines. In this way, we were often jumping between scales whilst designing. As the project progressed, we needed to develop the components and details according to what the local fabricator could manufacture in their facility. Jumping back across scales, we wanted to place the light nodes towards the centre so that the outer LCD shutters became more visible. Here, we were not happy about how the centre appeared much brighter and how the primary structure was visible at the outer edges. This diagram shows the build-up of the leaves, twigs and branches in the initial structural design. 16 metres in diameter, there were 40 suspension cables for a piece that weighed 2.2 tonnes. To reduce the weight where possible, we worked with aluminium, as it is widely machinable, was of recycled origin and could be widely recycled again in the future compared to carbon fibre or plastic composite materials. The next challenge was to find a way to interface with the escalator landing point. We learnt that we would not be able to interface with the escalator structure in any way, so this required more design development. Our proposed solution was to modify the catenary system to create a natural void for the escalator to pass through. The local architect proposed introducing beams around the escalator. We proposed modifying the catenary structure as shown. This resulted in the final primary structure design. The next challenge was to be able to inject the required power and data into the structure at these points so that there were no large cables feeding the piece. The next step was to bring all the components together at one to one. This is a sketch for a prototype in our London studio. And here is the final thing. It is still very much work in progress, but allowed us to test how the control hardware was integrated into the branches and how the layering of the components functioned in real life. The next step was to select a part of the artwork for a prototype to be built by the local contractor in South Korea. We chose this small section. This is the piece they created using some electronic components we supplied. It still had some details to be refined but it was a great test of our collaboration with Alto.
It also provided us opportunities to measure the functionality against the original concept references. Even when we got to installation, the innovation didn't stop. In order to correctly tension the cables and make sure the overall form was correct, water bottles were suspended from the primary structure during the process. Here you can see the installation in progress, with the testing of the edge-lit polymer panels occurring as each section is installed. As part of our development of the project, we had created a digital twin through a Unity system, which allowed us to both test content in virtual 3D space and also output it live to the artwork itself. This was fortuitous because we're required to commission the work remotely during the pandemic. This slide illustrates the working methodology for working remotely with the commissioning. We were given a four camera view of the artwork to use to program remotely from that allowed us to explore the installation via different angles and create a responsive and reactive system. This is the view looking back from the reception. In order to understand the people flow through the space, this view illustrates one of the active zones which capture movement occupancy and to trigger interaction. This was a test looking at the effect of interaction. These are some of the key parts of the content that were delivered in the final piece. We split the choreography of the piece into key modes so that we could sign it off internally, remotely. Autumn deployed the coppery hues we had seen on the trees adjacent to Alto's factory. The Beaufort scale is a way of visualising wind. We referenced this in terms of thinking about how different wind velocities affects the texture and animation of the trees. The presence of visitors, VIPs and Hankook employees all added animation to the tree's crown as they pass up on the escalator. And here we are, testing that. Testing the shadowing effect of the liquid crystal's shutters to mask light filtering from above. This movie shows the finished work in context. This is not a render or visualisation. The video was filmed during the pandemic, when there weren't many building occupants present. Only one member of the studio has visited the work, which is quite unusual. We feel the artwork installation complements the interior of the atrium. The transparent voxel can be read well against the rhythms and texture of the interior space. The artwork and its context was a visible collaboration between Hankook Tire, Foster and Partners, Changzhou, Alto, Altec, ITM, Jason Bruges Studio, and how the work was adapted in conversation with the client team. The space and the artwork have been featured in several K-dramas over the last year, and it has been adopted into the, the City of Pangyo art collection. I have now reached the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for the invitation to speak.